you, I mean, I know you grew up in this. How mm -hmm. long have you been kind of overseeing? I mean, are you, what would you say, would you say your title is with Gardens of Music? Are you? Well, I'm the president. President, Because okay, my parents are gone, oh, so okay. I'm. Okay. Okay. My husband calls me the big kahuna. The big but... kahuna. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but I've been doing these classes for about 20 years. Okay. Did you need another one? Welcome, everybody, to the class today. We've got a beautiful day here, and this is a wonderful Wonderful class to hopefully help lift your spirits, lift your mood. Um, I am so excited today to have Cindy Houston here leading this class. And, you know, one of the things with the education program here at the Reardon Clinic is I'm always looking for ways to look at health from different perspectives. And music is such an, an amazing, beautiful way to lift your mood and lift your spirit and lift your health. And, you know, even, you know, interestingly enough, we, we, you, you could ask a neurologist there, there, there's, there's very specific neurology that, that music, you know, there are certain areas of the brain that, that music touches. And so you can get real deep into that. Or, you know, Cindy's going to talk a little bit about, you know, just some of the more general health benefits of music. And so, um, you know, but, Overall, this is such an, a, a neat class, and I'm very, very excited to have um, you know Cindy come talk about all the different ways you can use music in your life um, to help with your health. So, Cindy, um, we were we were just talking. Cindy is the big Kahuna, the president <laughs> of Gartens Music, and she's been doing this for over 20 years, teaching these classes, and um, she likes to use music to help people who are, are beginners, you know, in music, gain an appreciation, make it less scary make it fun. And so um, so I'm really excited to introduce Cindy to, to talk a little bit more about music and then to show you a few of the things that they do with, um, you know, with the people that, that come to Gardens Music. So without further ado, Cindy, I'll let you take over. All right. Okay. Well, welcome. We're glad you're all here today. We are going to have some fun because music is fun, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about how we can benefit from music, and we're going to talk about how we can benefit even from making music. So we've got a lot of ground to cover. But um, one of the things that, whoops, let's back up one. There we go. One of the things that most people are aware of is, you know, the old saying that music is the universal language. And in fact, scientists believe that music or song came before language. Isn't that interesting? Uh, because a lot of us don't stop and think about this, but music conveys mood. Think about when you are watching a program on television. How do you know that the bad guy is almost caught up with the good guy? It's the music, right? How do you know that the big romantic scene is coming? It's the music. Okay, you have to have strings in a romantic scene. There's some kind of musician union rule or something. So <laughs> music conveys messages without even having words. And music also sets a mood. So think about that. What kind of music do we hear in the elevator or the dentist's office? It's usually not peppy music, soothing. That's the word I was looking for. It's soothing music because a lot of people are nervous in elevators. They're nervous in the dentist chair. But if you go to the gym to exercise, what kind of music do you hear at the gym? Upbeat, peppy music with a strong beat that makes you want to match your movement to that music. So, you know, music is really used all around us. I tell my classes, sometimes music is kind of used on us because you may not be aware of this, but in restaurants, depending on the type of restaurant, you're going to hear different kinds of music. At a fast food restaurant, they want you to eat your food and get out of your chair so somebody else can have it. They're going to play a different kind of music than the restaurant that wants you to linger and have some wine and have some dessert. You know, They want you to stay in your chair. So you will hear different kinds of music different places. But music really does affect our mood, and it conveys, our, conveys messages. But did you also know that music can help us learn? Music affects our memory as well. 
Anybody else in this room learn your ABCs to A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Remember that? That's how I learned my ABCs. Um, so music does help us learn things and help us remember things. And there's been some research done about Alzheimer's patients having um, improved memory when music is attached. And you've probably heard some, some stories like this. Um, one of our students came in the other day and said that she had gone to visit a relative at a care home, and they had a lady there who had Alzheimer's and had not spoken for years, four years. The staff had, no, had not known her to speak for that long. And as I said, Deborah's in one of our classes, and they had a piano there. And so she went over, and she was just kind of fiddling around. And this lady got up out of her chair and came over and stood by Deborah and said, move. <laughs> so Deborah moved, and she sat down at the piano and played beautifully and then stood up and said, thank you, and went back to her chair and this posture. Now, how could that be if she hadn't spoken in four years? Well, there's actually five kinds of memory. There's immediate memory, like we're having this conversation right now. There is short-term memory, what did I have for breakfast? There is long-term memory, you know, how old was I when I went on my first date? There's emotional memory, which is anything that is connected to your emotions. And then there's what they call procedural memory, which is your habit memory. Playing music covers three of those. Emotional, because music conveys emotion, sets mood, right? The habit of knowing what key to play or what string or whatever, but also just part of long term, because this lady had played for a long time. So music hits three of the five different kinds of memory, and that's why we sometimes hear stories like that. Um, music also stimulates the entire brain, and Dr. Ann kind of, kind of alluded to that. But if you think about dementia, it's the opposite, because dementia is brain atrophy. And so that's one of the reasons why we hear that music especially playing music, singing music, helps stimulate our brains and helps keep our brains you know, maintained and active and that kind of thing. Music is really all around us, conveying messages, setting moods, etc. But we can be more mindful about how we can use music in our lives and use the music to make us feel better. Here's some ways that we can use music. We can use it to match our mood and express it, okay? If you're feeling angry, if you're feeling blue, whatever, you can listen to or play that kind of music, and it's going to help you get those, those feelings out. There it is, express our feelings. Once we've done that, we can also use music to change our mood. Now, if you're feeling blue and you put on a real peppy patriotic song, that's going to be a mismatch because that's not how you're feeling. So first thing you want to use music for is to express your mood. Once you've got it expressed and you've kind of got it worked out, then you can go to changing your mood into what you'd like for it to be and match the music to that kind of mood. We can use music to stimulate us when we feel draggy. We can use music to calm our anxiety. That's why I mentioned the elevator and the dentist's office. So there's a lot of ways that we can be more mindful of using music, but one is we can use music to make us feel better. Now, this idea is really not new. You may have read the story in the Bible about... King Saul calling for David to come and play for him, you know, when he was troubled. So this idea of using music to make us feel better dates back to ancient times. Now, in modern times, our modern field of music therapy really 
being mindful and, and using music as therapy dates back to World War II when um, those who were treating the soldiers who'd come back from the war with injuries recognized that when people came to the hospitals and entertained them with music, it made a difference in their mood and how they felt and how they began to look at their lives. Um, these were soldiers who were suffering from what we would now call post-traumatic stress syndrome, okay? So that's when, really, we began to see music being used as therapy. But music makes us feel better because, and Dr. Ann mentioned this too, music stimulates different parts of the brain, but music is associated with the part of the brain that we call the reward system. It's it's the, the part of our brain that kind of sends out feel good, I feel good kind of messages. Okay, I turned two pages at once. Don't you hate that? There we go. <laughs> There's so much material here, I can't keep it all in my head, so I have to have a, a little bit of a script. But um, music does give us pleasure. And one of the reasons is because it is it stimulates a chemical in our brain called dopamine. Um, and that's because we're listening to music we like, we have some pleasure in it, and our brain starts producing dopamine. Now, dopamine is a chemical in your brain that affects your emotions, your movements, and your sensations of pleasure and pain. And research, again, shows us that because of that, music can help treat depression and anxiety because music stimulates those feel-good chemicals in our brain. This is something I've been studying lately because we have some customers who are dealing with chronic pain, but music can help alleviate pain. And that is partly because it stimulates the pleasure chemicals, but, you know, it's also partly because it just distracts us from our pain. So that's good, too. Um, researchers have found that music can reduce um, anxiety and nausea in chemotherapy patients. So that's nice. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, you might also hear about surgeons listen to music in the, in the uh, operating room. So music with the beat also helps us relax and reduce stress. And they found that it helps patients who have some kind of a motor disorder, for example, Parkinson's disease, help, helps them to move and walk better than they do in the absence of music. Now... A while ago, I mentioned that music brings us pleasure, and that makes our brains produce the chemical dopamine, because dopamine has the job also of being what we call a neurotransmitter. It helps our brain communicate with all the rest of our body, okay? So I'm going to show you a video here in a minute that uh, will introduce you to a gentleman named Larry. Larry is 73 years old, and he lives in Oklahoma. Now, he has Parkinson's disease, but before he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he sang, he danced, he liked to play guitar, he enjoyed music. Music was one of his hobbies. Well, Parkinson's began to affect his, his walk. How many of you have some experience with Parkinson's, and you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, a Parkinson's patient has kind of a shuffle because their brain's not communicating with their body and it's not telling their feet. Even though he knows what he wants his feet to do, they're not getting the message. And so a lot of times a Parkinson's patient kind of shuffles across the floor. And he was working with a therapist who was using traditional therapy methods to help him with this, and it was not helping. It was not being successful. So she started doing some research and discovered what music might do. So this is a video of the very first time that she used music in Larry's therapy. And there are several things I'm going to point out to you in a few minutes, but watch this. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Back up here. Do you need to hit 
display for that? Okay. And there um, we're going to demonstrate yeah, there you walking go. with no music first, just to kind of show the gait pattern. He's got Parkinson's, and so usually, you know, he's got the typical kind of shuffling gait pattern and difficulty with um, smooth gait cadence. Then I'll show a video with the music, and you'll see the difference. He's approaching a door jam here that he really struggles with. Notice that. Okay, so now we're going to do um, gate training with music. Everybody's got cell phones. Everybody nowadays has music on their phone. So this is kind of a really easy way to do it. So stand here for a minute. We'll get the rhythm. Once we fill it, then we'll take off. Thank you, Paul. Isn't that amazing? The only change was the addition of the music. Now, I was just going to point that out. It was a song he knew because he sang along. Did you see that? It was a song he enjoyed. He liked that song. But most important was he felt the beat. You know, when they first, before they started walking, she said, now we're going to take a minute to get the beat. And so... It was the beat of the music that helped his brain communicate the, the uh, messages to his feet. So scientists believe that music enables the brain to bypass damaged or faulty circuits in the brain. And so that's pretty interesting. If, if music can go around the parts of his brain that are not working, then what can music do for us, right? All right, well, we've talked about how we can benefit from listening to music. We saw a pretty amazing example right here. But research shows that when we make the music, that it benefits us even more. Now, how many of you sitting here now play a musical instrument? Hold up. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just, I'm just curious. How many of you play? Okay. How many of you used to play an instrument but haven't played it for a long time? Okay, I got some of those, too. Okay. <laughs> How many of you have never played a musical instrument? All right, great. Well, we have a real cross-section. We have a little bit of everything, then. Well, what they find is that um, there was a major study in 1998 that involved seven universities, and it included our own University of Kansas, which I'm very proud of, but they focused on the effects of music making in adults. Now, probably most of you have heard, it's pretty common knowledge, that when kids learn to play music, 
it does benefit them even in their academic subjects, which would seem unrelated, but it's really not. So after a few years of that research, they began to be intrigued about how do we as adults benefit, and that's when this study took place. And what they found was that even novice adult beginners with no prior experience, who would not have called themselves musical, experienced a decrease in anxiety, depression, and loneliness after only 10 weeks of playing music. Um, here's what they found. Oh, wait. OK, there we go. Active music making versus passive music listening gives us more benefits. Physically, it gives us relaxed motor, tension, or motor skills. It improves our fine motor dexterity. And psychologically, it's going to maintain and expand our mental abilities. We have social benefits because we have some fellowship. We have some new friends, especially if you're in, involved in a music class or in a choir or anything like that. And emotionally, music is a time out from your troubles. It can help us express our feelings. It can help us change feelings. It's interesting to me that one of the things that we hear over and over at our store is uh, when I sit down to play, my troubles just melt away. And it's that exact word, melt away, that we hear from lots of different people. So I think that that is a, a really good testimonial to how we can benefit from music. Music also helps us manage stress and just in general promotes feelings of well-being. Now, that's important because Columbia University recently came out with a study where they believe that 80% of our illnesses are stress-related. So anything that we can do to reduce stress is going to help us be healthier. Let me tell you a little bit more about some research that's been done concerning music. Um, music making stimulates the entire immune system and raises the body's primary defenses against germs. That was an Australian study. Um, there was a German study that found that singing in a choir boosted immune system. So in cold season, we should all be singing in choirs, I guess, right? <laughs> okay. Um, musical training, even late in life, can improve our speech processing, offset memory loss, improve our ability to communicate in complex, noisy environments. Have you been to a restaurant that was so noisy that you couldn't hear the person across the table from talk to you? Yep. OK, I'm not quite there yet. Let's see. I had another one. Offsets difficulties hearing speech and noise. We just did that one. But the list of benefits to making music just goes on and on. And all of those benefits apply if you listen to music, but the, the result is greatly multiplied if you are the one making the music. So some of you have played, and if you play now, we encourage you to keep doing that. If you used to play and haven't for a long time, then we encourage you to pick it up and maybe play again. Or maybe pick up a new instrument, learn something new. But if you'd like to learn to play music and you've never learned, the good news is it is never too late. A lot of times we have people come into our store and talk about making music, and they always kind of act like you know that ship has sailed, that they're an adult. Um, adults seem to think that if they didn't learn music as children, They've missed their opportunity. And the good thing about music is it's never too late to learn. But, you know, one thing that we do not ever hear in our store from an adult is, I'm sure glad I never took music lessons. <laughs> Nobody ever says that. We also never hear, I'm sure glad my parents let me quit taking lessons. We hear the opposite a lot, but not that one. Um, so what can we do? if we want to learn to play music. Our record so far for our oldest beginner student is 94 years old, OK? His buddy, who was 89, had the record until he brought his friend. And 
<laughs> now that's the record. So a while ago we saw, or, or it's on there now, 85% of adults wish they could play a musical instrument. And it's not too late. We have the answer to how you can learn to play music. And I would like for you to hear from a couple of our students now. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our classes and lessons that we offer and all that sort of thing. But before we go into that, I want you to meet Jerry Ackridge. Jerry, you want to come on up? Jerry was playing for you a while ago, but she's going to tell you a little bit about her experience at making music and what her music means to her, and then she's going to play a song for us. And she's nervous, so give her, <laughs> give her another hand clap, shall we? There you go. All right. so sweet. So let me make sure this is on and I'm close enough, about right there. Okay, so my name is Jerry Acreage. I was introduced to Garten's Music at a similar event just like this, and it was actually totally accidental. It was my turn to take my grandma to her monthly meeting, and the Garten Music just happens to be putting on this exact um, presentation. Well, I had recently retired, and um, on my bucket list, was learn to play music. So this was like meant to be, I was supposed to be at this event for my grandma, mm -hmm. and I learned about the music program, and it was uh, just over a year ago. So I've been with the music program a year now. The staff there is very friendly and very patient. <laughs> 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 they have help, help sessions whenever you need them. And another thing about this uh, program is the music is so easy to learn, the way they've got it set up, that it's almost instant gratification. You know how us adults are. We don't want to take 10 years. We don't even want to take six months learning things. So I'm going to go ahead and play a uh, song right out of book one, a song I was playing maybe two, three weeks into this music class. I have to admit, I did know a little bit of music on my right hand. I knew zero on my left hand, zero. So I'm just going to play a very simple song right out of book one. Next, we're going to hear from Jocelyn Picard, and some of you probably already know Jocelyn because she volunteers out here, and so if you don't know her, you've probably Hopefully seen her, but <laughs> if you've been around, you know Jocelyn. Like I said, hopefully they won't fire me after they hear what I'm playing, <laughs> but <laughs> I've been doing, I joined about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and the, how I joined was I was at a purse auction. And Gartens had had the goofing around class in it. And I didn't know that was in the purse that I wanted, okay? 
So um, I, voted, I, I uh, bid on the purse, I got the purse, and I started looking at the stuff that was inside the purse, and I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of goofy. This just might be for me. And so anyhow, I went and I talked to Cindy, and I said, okay, what is this all about? <laughs> she told me, and I said, well, you know, it's been a long, long time since I played the piano, and um, not that I really practiced it a lot when as a kid, but... <laughs> I did know a few a few notes and stuff, but it was so great because I have met some wonderful people. I've met Jerry, Cindy, and the people in my classes. And um, Mark is wonderful. He, he's our instructor. And um, he's always taught us, even if it does, you know, even if you play it and it doesn't sound right to somebody else, it's your song, so play it anyway. <laughs> play it, it's my composition. <laughs> So with the song that I'm going to play, if you don't recognize it, don't worry. I might not recognize it either. But um, <laughs> it is fun. I love it because one of the things for me is I didn't always learn my left-hand chords. And with one finger, I can play a three-fingered chord, and I love it. There's song setups on the, on the, on the pianos and the, and the uh, not the piano, but the, the organs and stuff, and uh, I love it. So... Great. Tell them what you're going to play. Oh, what am I going to play? That's a good read. Uh, Yankee Doodle Boy. Okay. Yankee Doodle Boy. Let's put that over here so they can hear what you're playing. Oh, that's right. Get your, get your flags out. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, Jocelyn. There are really only two things that you need in order to learn to play music. You need some patience, you know. Um, when our daughter was eight, she went and took her first piano lesson and came home in tears because she thought she was going to take one lesson and play like her father who'd been playing for 12 years. <laughs> Uh, well, it doesn't really work quite like that. We have to have a little bit more patience, but in our classes, you do go home from your first class able to play your first song. So that's one thing. The other thing is the willingness to spend some time learning and playing. Those are really the only things that you need in order to learn to play. And you'll notice we didn't get real upset if there was a mistake because we're just having fun. So we're pretty relaxed. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from a gentleman named Steve Brown. He's a um, sales trainer in the real estate, real estate business. And he says, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly until you can learn to do it better. And I love that because I like that philosophy. 
you know, it may take us a little longer to learn things after we pass that big 5-0 birthday, but research shows that even though it might take us a little longer to learn it, once we learn concepts, we retain them as well as we did when we were younger. So that's good news. And as we mentioned earlier, learning things is a really good workout for our brains. So it is good for us. Music in particular uses a lot of different parts of our brains and a lot of different functions in our brains. So one of the things that we really love about music is research shows that playing music actually lowers your risk of dementia and cognitive impairment. And they also have found that age-related delays in how fast your brain processes things are really not inevitable. You know, a lot of times we think that's just going to happen to us as we get older. But it's really not inevitable because it can be offset with musical training. Um, older musicians, in fact, in, in a study at Northwestern, outperformed their non-musical peers. In fact, they also outperformed younger people. How about that? So your question might be, well, if I don't currently make music, how can I learn to make music? Um, I didn't tell you a lot about our store at the beginning, so let me tell you a little bit. We do have uh, a retail store at 4235 West Central. We're just west of West Street on Central. But a big part of what we do there is music education. We help people learn to play. We help people learn to play better, more, new instruments, whatever. So we, there are actually two philosophies of music education. One is what you might call um, classical training. That is what you would get at college. Uh, traditional music educators are going to teach for achievement. Okay, So that would be a high level of performance. We're talking about, you know, they may have a student who's going to be the next, you know, famous concert violinist or pianist or whatever. But the other philosophy of music making is what we call recreational music making. And that is just making music for your own enjoyment, making music for fun. And in that case, whoop, back up one, there we go, the student is actually the judge of the success because they're just playing for fun. Now, in your, in your uh, little packets there, or at least on top of your packets, you have two flyers. One of them looks like this, and it has this logo on it. This is what we call our Wichita Music Academy. This is our program where we teach folks of all ages how to play all kinds of instruments. Everything from voice lessons to trombone or clarinet, um, piano, recorder, violin, all kinds of things. So if you are interested in playing guitar, for example, then we could hook you up with a teacher. These are one teacher, one student lessons. Or if you have a grandchild who wants to learn piano or needs some help with their clarinet for school, then that program might be good for you. But we also have our goofing around keyboard class, and you have another flyer about that. And I have another, oh, there's, all, there's a list of some of the instruments that we offer, if you can see around the little instrument. But we have another video. Paul, where are you? <laughs> Mr. Video. <laughs> the tra traditional piano or organ player uses written music to tell them which key to play finger by finger, or even lots of fingers on both hands all at once. The traditional organist uses both hands and also plays bass pedals with his or her feet. Professional musicians often use lead sheets with a simple single note melody. Letters and numbers above the melody tell them what chords to use for accompaniment. Easy Play Music is a simplified, large print version of a lead sheet. Doesn't this look easier? We use this Easy Play Music in our classes.
Through the years that we've been in business, we've often met people who got excited about learning to play music, invested in an instrument, and then never could figure out how to play it. So we were very excited to start the Goofing Around Keyboard class to help people learn to play, even if they had no prior experience. One of the reasons that we loan all of our beginner students a keyboard just like this one is because some people don't own an instrument and most adults are not going to go out and purchase an instrument just to see if they're going to like playing. So everyone has an opportunity to try the hobby of making music with just the cost of the class. In addition, these keyboards have lots of features on them that make it easier for the novice to learn how to play and lots of sounds and rhythm styles that make it especially fun. Well, Cindy, you had a class at the Senior Expo about three years ago, and I stopped at your booth and got your information um, about the keyboard, the Easy Keyboard class, and I decided I, that's what I wanted to do in retirement. I was very surprised at how fun it looked, how easy you made it sound, and I was very pleased with the, the instrument that you loaned us to learn on, um, and so I just, I just loved it. Immediately connected. Was it hard to learn? Oh, absolutely not. It was so easy to learn. It means everything. I, do, I, I uh, play throughout the day at different times. Uh, I play when I'm happy. I play when I'm sad. I play when I'm... Uh, feeling blue, but it just really transcends my mood, makes me feel so much pos more positive about life, and I just, I just love it. It's like, music is like telling stories, and I've learned to, to love all the different stories that the people throughout history have told us through their music, and so I'm really enjoying it. The traditional way of playing the organ means a lot of notes with your left hand and a bass pedal with your foot. And as I change to play other chords, you have to move both your hand and your foot. But what Lowry has done for us is given us the easy button. And now with just one finger, I get the same sound that we used to use both pedals and lots of notes with our left hand. I love music. I've always loved music. I, it's, it's just part of who I am. I love it. <laughs> it makes me feel good. And I think that's why I like it. No matter what the venue is, um, what beat, what anything, it just reaches down so deep I can't even explain it. I love it. You know, playing CDs and stuff is a whole lot different when you're teaching kids. And this, I, I wanted to take because it was, I was curious because of the goofing around part. And um, so when I came in to check on the certificate I got, I, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And now I'm on my third book. And it's easy. It's easy. Especially when you've been away for a long time. It's really a good segue into being back in it. I love the teachers, um, <laughs> and and I like the the people that are in my class. And it's just neat to be around people that like doing the same thing I do. We have a great time together. We do learn to um, appreciate each other's style and what it means to each, each person. 
and it's different. So it, but yet we're all together. It's, it's really cool. I love it. I love the people. Our easy play music is a simplified version of a professional's lead sheet. We have a single note melody and a chord symbol for our left hand accompaniment. Our easy play music is large print music so that we can put the letter of the key in the note and then match that up with the letter above the key on the keyboard. Everyone has an instrument like this in the goofing around keyboard class because in the beginner class, all students are loaned a Lowry quick start keyboard exactly like this one. Uh, one of your former students, uh, I, I talked to her about keyboards and everything. She told me about you and I called you and uh, came to your introductory class and I was hooked. When I came here, <laughs> the only thing I could play was a record or a CD. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's become my number one hobby now. I don't miss very many classes because I enjoy this so much and I enjoy the people and, and, uh, and every class is a learning experience. I don't care how long you go here, you still learn something every class. So therefore, I keep going and of course, you know, I love music and I have actually gotten into music that I never listened to before. I used to like jazz and classical. Now I listen to country, Broadway, everything. So it has given new horizons for me in music, and that's why I stick with it. I think right away I learned to play Mary Ann. It didn't take long because the uh, it was very easy. The, the loaner organ that you gave me, it was very easy. Within a couple of days, I was playing about two or three songs. The way that uh, the books are printed, with the notes and the uh, key in it. And no, it was very easy. And I find that it's easy because it's not like a piano where you really got to push the keys. This is all electronic and plus the books are easy. And the instruction you get here, all that tied together made it very easy. Now I leave my organ on. Anytime I pass by it, I might sit down and hit a couple of songs. It's not my hobby now, it's turned into my life, really. Instead of when you hear a certain song on the radio, well, you can go through your books and play that song yourself, you know? <laughs> we use familiar tunes in our classes because it's more fun to play a song that you already know, but it's also easier to learn to play a song you already know. So in our beginner class, we learn songs like Jingle Bells, Ode to Joy, Bye Bye Love, and Love Me Tender. In Jingle Bells, I'm also going to learn about rhythm by using an automatic accompaniment. Listen to this song. I'm still using one finger. Isn't that cool? We've been doing these classes for about 20 years now, and the only people that have been unable to learn to play in these classes are folks who do have Alzheimer's, they've got the memory loss, because it's very hard to learn something new if you really don't have short-term memory. But, you know, in more than one case, that was a spouse brought the Alzheimer's patients hoping that it was something they could do and it wound up being really good for the caregiving spouse and they're the ones who started playing. So um, the Goofing Around Keyboard class consists of 10 weekly one-hour classes, two private one-on-one -on -one lessons or more. If you need more, if you have to miss a, a week or something like that, we can always do a private lesson and get you caught up. Um, it includes the book and all the handouts, and I do have one of our books up here, so if you'd like to come and have a look at it, um, that's the curriculum that we use, and then we also get handouts every week. 
and the loan of the Lowry Quick Start keyboard. And this is it right here. And as, as we talked about in the video, the reason that we loan a keyboard is because, number one, if someone doesn't have an instrument, most of the time they're not willing to go out and buy one just to experiment. So this allows anyone to try the hobby of playing a keyboard. But the other reason is because it has all those features on it that make it easier to learn to play. Everything we learn in our class is musically correct, and everything will trans transfer to any kind of keyboard instrument, be it a short keyboard, be it a piano or a digital piano, or an organ. And the definition of organ is more than one keyboard. Okay. A lot of times when you say organ to people, they think of the music they hear at funerals, okay? Which, speaking of setting a mood, okay, there you go. But actually, the, the maker of these instruments call them virtual orchestras because there's all kinds of sounds, including you heard the bluegrass style here, you know, you heard the patriotic style, you heard Elvis, so um, it's not just funeral music anymore. But... All of that is included, and it's normally $129.95 for the package, but you all have a coupon in your flyers. If you know this is something you want to do and you'd like to register for the next class, if you register today, either while we're here or call us on the phone before the day's out and register by phone, it's half price. It's $64.95. Um, if you're not sure... Our next class is going to begin on June 28th. We're going to meet on Thursdays at 1.30. But if you'd like to know more, next Thursday at 2 o'clock, we are going to have a free introductory class. And that would give you an opportunity to come and see the classroom. Um, I actually teach the beginner classes, so you've already met the instructor. But you get a chance to um, just kind of see what we do and learn more about it. And then if you wanted to enroll at the introductory class, you have another coupon in your flyer um, that would give you a discount. So you could get the whole class for $98. Um, you really don't have anything to lose in taking this class because, as I said, it all transfers to any other kind of keyboard instrument. It's a lot of fun. And sometimes we have folks take the class who are complete novices and they're starting with no, no information at all, and that's where we start. So um, we're, you're comfortable from that, from the outset. If you played piano when you were a kid or, you know, played in the band when you were in high school or whatever and haven't played since, then this class is a really good reminder and refresher. And you'll be surprised how much you remember. People always think they've forgotten everything, but it, you know, it's still in the memory file cabinet. It's just in the back of the bottom drawer. It's still in there. Um, but it's, it's really just good for anybody who has an interest in playing any kind of keyboard. The other component of our classes, which isn't even talked about on here, is we do wellness activities. And so one of the things we learn to do in our classes is use the music we're playing to help us in all these ways that we've talked about. Help us express our feelings, help us change our feelings, help us reduce our stress, all that kind of thing. Um, the really best news is that while playing music is really good for us in a lot of ways, it's also fun. It's not fattening. No. <laughs> it is good for us. We can express our feelings, change our mood, reduce our stress, relax our tension, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I don't think we ever got the um, drawing slips picked up. Did we, or did you do that, Joss, while I was not paying attention? Okay. We're, gonna, we're going to pick up your drawing slips right now, and then we're going to do a, pro, a prize drawing for our door prizes. So if you haven't filled it out, fill it out fast. And just so you know, we are not going to inundate you with junk or call you on the phone. We will let send you a postcard or an email, let you know when we're starting a new class, but this information does not ever leave us, so we don't share it with anybody or or inundate you with junk. So. No Facebook scandals, right? Yeah. Like, huh? No Facebook scandals like on the news, right? No, no. <laughs> Did we get everybody? 
Did you get yours filled out here? Because I saw you working on it. Nope. Okay. All right. Let's see who we have in here. Our first prize is going to be for uh, free enrollment. Whoa, look at that. This is for Marilyn Mason. Is that you? Oh, all right. Well, you want me to draw somebody else? Here, I'll tell you what. How about a CD with a bunch of really good music on it? You can.